Hey guys, Nifla here and welcome to my channel for everyone who's still undecided what build to play in the upcoming Breach League. I've got a collection of powerful builds for you. Links to all passive trees and recommended gear can be found in my guide compendium. Just click the info cards or the links in the description below. And without further talking, let's start right away with the Cyclone Raider. The Raider's Ascendancy nodes got major buffs in patch 2.5. First of all, Rapid Assault now grants Onslaught on kill rather than just a chance. And this Onslaught effect now also lasts longer with the new duration nodes and on top of that it's also twice as effective, providing you with 40% movement, cast and attack speed. What kept me from rolling Raider so far was sustaining Frenzy charges is too hard, especially in boss fights. But with the rework of Way of the Poacher, we now got a 20% chance to gain a Frenzy charge on hit versus rare and unique enemies, making it finally possible to stay at maximum Frenzy charges 100% of the time. All combined, resulting in insane bonus attack speed and movement speed, perfectly synergizing with Cyclone. Cyclone's AoE is increased significantly with the 2.5 buff to weapon range. From what we saw in Ziggy's tweets, two-handed swords range was increased from 6 to 11, so almost doubled. That's a crazy more multiplier for Cyclone's AoE. High movement and attack speed paired with this area of effect equals high clear speed, which is essential in 2.5 in order to keep the breaches open as long as possible, maximizing your rewards. For more details on gear and passives, check out the guide compendium and if requested, I might make a more detailed video guide once 2.5 is deployed. My next recommended build makes use of the most ancient exploit in Path of Exile, the Ignite Double Dipping. Ever since Path of Exile 1.0, people stacked high elemental damage in order to both scale their fire spells and their ignites, resulting in very high damage on a low investment. Almost every infamous boss one-shot was done by inflicting massive ignites. And for all builds of this type, the Elementalist is the ascendancy class of choice. As Beacon of Ruin spreads the burn effect to other nearby enemies, basically providing a free elemental proliferation support gem. Now you just set any monster on fire and unroll a devastating ember. Flame Blast suits this playstyle in multiple ways. First of all, it provides a very high impact damage. For every stage of channeling, this skill gains 110% more spell damage, resulting in 11 times its base damage at the final stage. And secondly, as it's a channeling spell, you can time its hits precisely, maximizing your DPS with Pendulum of Destruction and Shaper of Desolation. Paired with Elemental Equilibrium, Flame Ability and Elemental Overload, even tier 16 bosses melt away in record time. For leveling, you start life based, but after Merciless Dried Lake, one should try to get CI as soon as possible, as you reach way higher life pools with a lot less passive nodes. The CI meta still rules Rayclass after all. A very nice forum guide for a Flame Blast Elementalist was created by Waldgeist, so if you want to check it out, there is also a link in the description below. A very similar approach is going Explosive Arrow Elementalist. The mechanics behind this are exactly the same. The only real difference is that one usually goes live based and gets Chaos plus Blood Magic for juicy 10k HP. So if you're bored by Flame Blast but still want to stick to the Ignite playstyle, check out the EA Forum Guide by Green Groove. It's very detailed and as always, linked in the description below. Now we got the Ignite exploits covered, let's move on to Poison. Poison still isn't touched at all in 2.5 and remains one of the top cheesy ways to scale your DPS. Similar to Ignite Double Dipping, Poison is also affected by multiple damage modifiers which also scale the initial attacks that inflict it. The best ascendancy class for this is Assassin of course, with its toxic delivery, 100% more damage for Poison and Bleed inflicted with critical strikes, and together with the base crit from Deadly Infusion, you get 95% crit chance with ease. Void Heart is the key unique in order to get consistent poison going, with its up to 50% chance to bleed, paired with Assassin's Noxious Strike, we are at 80%. 
and with the 40% chance to poison, it's also increased by another 40% versus bleeding enemies from Noxious Strike, plus additional 25% from Dirty Techniques. If you choose to play with Daggers, Edda's Touch gets into the mix as well. The most popular skill used will be Blade Flurry, as it has great AoE and soul target and is superior DPS to any other melee skill at the moment, as it's basically a physical spell, scaling with attack modifiers and weapon damage, hashtag balanced. GGD tuned it down a bit in 2.5, but it's still nowhere near balanced in my opinion. Mathil has created a lot of different Blade Flurry passive trees, so if you want to try this out, just check out this video. I will save you guys some time and won't repeat everything he said. In the endgame, I would really recommend you to also go for CI here, as it's really hard to get above 6k HP pool on the right side of the tree, while it's easy to reach double the amount of energy shield. Another option for min-maxing poison is using Cyclone. As already mentioned, major AoE buffs incoming, so basically Flubby's old poison clone is now even stronger. Here's a link to this guide from 2.4, which basically works exactly the same in 2.5. Except from Pathfinder being nerfed significantly due to the changes to Flask Charge Generation and the way Blade Vortex deals damage now, the meta hasn't really changed that much in 2.5, so the stuff that was good and viable in 2.4 and even 2.3 will still work 90% of the time. Ancestral Warchief is still a great build. 10% reduced damage won't change that. It's still very powerful, low budget and especially high flexibility as a league starter. And my old Flame Totem Inquisitor works one to one as explained in my 2.3 guide. Also a great league starter with a good endgame scaling. The generic crit staff slayer as well as a Basso Inquisitor. Same story here, you can still play them perfectly fine in 2.5. That's it for my short overview for now, I hope I could help you out a bit and you're now well prepared for the Breach release. Attention prisoners! For your crimes against Oriath, you have been exiled to the forsaken continent of Rayclast. The Magisters of Oriath are merciful and have granted all exiles one weapon. Choose wisely. Oriath has bestowed a gift upon you, a chance to redeem your crimes, a new life! Do not squander it! 